Hello people, in this video, <clears throat> we want to look at diabetic nephropathy, very important for the exam. So a person who has diabetes or high blood sugar, chronic hyperglycemia, if this person has, okay, so high blood sugar level, chronic hyperglycemia, if he has, then uh, this person, the diabetic person, when he does not control his sugar, it can go into so many things like retinopathy, nephropathy, right? peripheral neuritis, right? So many things, the complications of diabetes we have already dealt with, correct? We have seen uh, what gangrene? Wet gangrene. So, so many complications are there in that one of the complications is nephropathy. Nephro means something to do with the uh, nephrons, the kidney. So, what happens exactly is, <clears throat> okay, diabetic nephropathy is nothing but a complication of diabetes mellitus. So, it is more common in type 1 diabetes mellitus than in type 2 diabetes mellitus. So, basically, there are a lot of uh, types of diabetes like type 1, type 2. Then you have other causes like uh, uh, pancreatectomy, etc. Genetic factors, right? So many I guess, gestational diabetes mellitus. In that, basically, in so many types, in the type 1, this diabetes nephropathy is very common, okay? So basically what happens is hyperglycemia that is increased uh, sugar levels. Basically this is a metabolic disorder. Remember, diabetes mellitus is a metabolic disorder, right? So uh, there is hyperglycemia. The body cannot uh, metabolize uh, the glucose. The glucose basically, uh, there is high, high level of glucose, so hyperglycemia. So there is um, endothelial the vascular changes, you know, vascular damages happen. So, there is hyperperfusion to the uh, kidney. There is more blood flow and uh, there is protein urea. So, there is uh, in the urine, there is protein. So, this will initially be asymptomatic. Then, uh, there is nephrotic syndrome where, is this, the, where there will be heavy protein urea. Then, there will be renal failure, right? Then, uh, renal failure will lead to hypertension, then cardiac uh, issues, then death also. So, basically, uh, diabetic nephropathy is the most common cause of renal failure. Right? So, controlling blood sugar level is very, very important. So, did you understand what we were trying to explain in this video? Diabetic nephropathy is a very common cause for renal failure and uh, controlling glucose level is very important. Moving on. Now, morphology, that is what exactly you will see in a diabetic nephropathy, what exactly you will see in the kidney, in the glomerulus, what will you see? First, there will be sclerosis glomerulosclerosis, diabetic glomerulosclerosis, then there will be vascular lesions, diabetic pyelonephritis, that is the inflammation of the nephron, right? Diabetic pyelonephritis and tubular lesions. So, there is, if this is the glomerulus and this is the tubule and this is the vasculature, so some vascular lesions, some glomerular sclerosis, some uh, uh, inflammation of the nephron and even tubular lesions can be there. Okay, <clears throat> so you understood what and all are the four headings under which you have to write. First, sclerosis, you have to explain vascular lesions, pyelonephritis and tubular lesions. Okay, first let us try to understand this one, diabetic glomerulosclerosis. First you see here that <clears throat> the glomerulus is getting affected, it is getting sclerosed. So if this is the glomerulus, this is getting sclerosed. Right? So, what exactly? There are two things here. Diffuse glomerulosclerosis and nodular glomerulosclerosis. Two things you have to explain. Diffuse and nodular. Now, first of all, there is hyperglycemia because of which there is glomerular hypertension. There is hyperperfusion to the kidney. Excess blood flow is happening. There is deposition of proteins in the mesangium. So, there are mesangial cells into which there is deposition of protein. So, there is glomerulosclerosis and then renal failure. Growth factors are released, especially the transforming growth factor beta is released, okay? So, in this, uh, under glomerulosclerosis, you have to explain two points. That is uh, diffuse glomerular sclerosis and nodular glomerular sclerosis. Let's look at the details now. So, are you understanding that we are trying to explain the diabetic nephropathy? We are looking at the morphology now. Four headings you have to explain. The diabetic glomerulosclerosis, then vascular lesions, then uh, 
pyelonephritis then tubular lesions okay so now let us move on to diffuse glomerulosclerosis so what are we do looking at diabetic nephropathy in that we are looking at diffuse glomerulosclerosis now all glomeruli are involved there is thickening of the glomerular basement membrane increase in the mesangial matrix proliferation of mesangial cells capsular hyaline drops and fibrin caps which have been explained below okay so what and all is actually happening here in diffuse glomerulo sclerosis okay so hold on just we have tried to explain um, this with a diagram just look at this the parts first of all this black line represents the basement membrane okay these are the mesangial cells here mesangial cells here then here you have the if what is this podocytes right the endo uh, epithelium epithelium you have the podocytes this uh, red will have the endothelium of the blood vessel okay so now what is happening in uh, diabetic nephropathy there is thickening of the glomerular basement membrane okay so this glomerular basement membrane is becoming thick okay then in the mesangial matrix there is increase there is increase in the mesangial matrix the matrix is increasing and this proliferation of mesangial cells mesangial cells are proliferating so there are lot of mesangial cells here okay then there is something called as capsular hyaline drops and fibrin caps okay we'll come to that but remember thickening of uh, basement membrane you are seeing you are seeing under the microscope and you are seeing this basement membrane has become thick the mesangial matrix is more the proliferation of mesangial cells are there then you should kind of guess it is diabetic nephropathy now what are these capsular drop and uh, fibrin caps let's look at that capsular drop is eosinophilic hyaline thickening okay it is eosinophilic hyaline thickening of the parietal layer of the bowman's capsule and bulges into the glomerular space then you have something called as fibrin cap which is homogeneous brightly eosinophilic material appearing on the wall of the peripheral capillary of the lobule first of all understand where exactly we are talking about now capsular drop where is it parietal layer of the bowman's capsule and bulges into the glomerular space so where is the bowman's capsule this entire thing is the bowman's capsule now hyaline thickening of the parietal layer which is the parietal layer so look at this diagram here <clears throat> so here is the thickened glomerular basement membrane okay this thick line around it they have put the fibrin cap and here parietal parietally they have put the capsular drop that is the hyaline deposit right and then you have mesangial matrix here this is the mesangial matrix mesangial cells they have shown here mesangial matrix here you have the fibrin cap and capsular drop first let's see if we can read again and understand what they're trying to explain what exactly is capsular drop capsular drop is a eosinophilic hyaline thickening of the parietal layer of the bowman's capsule and it bulges into the glomerular space see this is kind of bulging into the glomerular space can you see it is bulging into the glomerular space it is a eosinophilic hyaline thickening of the parietal layer of the bowman's capsule it is the parietal layer of the bowman's capsule this entire thing is the bowman's capsule now look at the the next thing here fibrin cap what is this fibrin cap so let us look at this fibrin cap fibrin cap is homogeneously brightly eosinophilic material appearing on the wall of the peripheral capillary of the lobule what is this peripheral capillary of the lobule the peripheral capillary of the lobule bright eosinophilic material appearing on the wall of the peripheral capillary of the lobule so there is some fibrin cap capsular drop 
thick and glomerular basement membrane matrix mesangial matrix has increased and the mesangial cells are also proliferating okay this is the diffuse glomerulosclerosis let's move on now so now we will move on to the nodule glomerulonef glomerulosclerosis right nodular glomerulosclerosis so what are we studying actually we are looking at diabetic nephropathy in that we are now moving on to nodular glomerulosclerosis here they are also called as a kimmelstyl kimmelstyl we always go with the spelling for the exam kimmelstyl wilson kw lesions or intercapillary intercapillary glomerulosclerosis that is the other name so kimmel stiel wilson's lesions or intercapillary glomerulosclerosis are nothing but nodular glomerulosclerosis okay so usually you will see in type 1 diabetes more okay so in uh, many glomeruli you will see one or more nodule look at this diagram here so nodule you can see in this is a lobule in each lobule this entire thing is a bowman's capsule right now in this bowman's capsule in this lobule you can see nodular hyaline deposit in the mesangial matrix okay this is the arteriole thickening thickened glomerular basement membrane see here they have shown four nodules actually nodular hyaline deposit so this is nodular glomerulosclerosis the earlier one one we saw was what diffuse diffuse means what everywhere it will be affected right all glomeruli so you will see capsular drop in the parietal layer of the bowman's capsule which bulges into the glomerular space then you saw the fibrin cap in the peripheral capillary of the lobule okay now we are moving on to nodular glomerulosclerosis in which we are seeing nodules here there can be one or more nodules in many glomeruli so not all glomeruli they are just saying in many glomeruli most glomeruli you might see nodules nodule is what it is an ov ovoid or spherical laminated hyaline acellular mass located within a lobule of the glomerulus so in the lobule there is a nodule which can be ovoid or spherical laminated hyaline it is going to be obviously hyaline acellular mass it is okay it is an acellular mass it's not difficult right hyaline the nodules are surrounded peripherally by glomerular capillary loops obviously the nodules are surrounded by the peripheral glomerular capillary loops which may have normal or thickened gbm actually thickened gbm i like because in diabetic nephropathy you are always saying thickened uh, uh, basement membrane right so moving on to some more points on this uh, nodular glom glomerulosclerosis what am i saying please wake up glomerulosclerosis nodular we are looking at some more points are there look at it the nodules are pass positive some stain they contain lipid and fibrin i thought they contain hyaline right they contain lipid and fibrin as the nodular lesions enlarge they em they compress as these lesions uh, st uh, these nodules start um, enlarging obviously they go on compressing the glomerular capillaries and they obliterate the glomerular tuft as a result of this uh, the renal ischemia occurs renal ischemia occurs leading to tubular atrophy and intestinal interstitial sorry interstitial fibrosis and results in grossly small contracted kidney grossly small contracted kidney so what is happening these nodules they are saying they are pas positive that is what is this acid skiff i know what is p that is actually periodic acid skiff stain okay for glycoproteins for polysaccharides obviously here you are dealing with sugar glucose obviously it could be something like that so then uh, what were we saying let's just look at the entire thing again so basically what happens these uh, nodular glomerulosclerosis actually it is called as kimmel stiel wilson 
Kimmel style L. Wilson lesions or intercapillary glomerulosclerosis. Intercapillary glomerulosclerosis. It's very common in type 1 diabetes. In um, one, in many glomeruli, there can be one or more nodules. Okay, this nodule will be ovoid or spherical, and it will be located within the within the lobule. Okay. It is a highly in acellular mass. It's laminated. The nodules are surrounded by the capillary and the GBM, the glomerular basement membrane may be thickened. Now, it is pass positive and uh, uh, as these nodules enlarge, they will compress the capillaries and they will obliterate the glomerular tuft. Okay. So, now what will happen as the arteries are involved, the arterioles are involved, there is ischemia. These capillaries are getting compressed. The blood flow is not going to happen properly. There will be tubular atrophy. The, there will be interstitial fibrosis. They'll start the kidney will the interstitial uh, space will start getting fibrosed. Imagine then there will be a grossly small contracted kidney. So what and all you have understood so far? Let us see if you have understood anything at all. We give you a completely new slide. See and try to understand. Okay, what happened? Now, basically, there is a diabetes. This guy has excess sugar. So, first of all, uh, he is going to have sclerosis. In that sclerosis, we discussed diffuse sclerosis and nodular sclerosis, right? In diffuse sclerosis, you saw some uh, capsular uh, and some fibrin cap, right? What did you see? Capsular drop. Capsular drop and fibrin cap you saw. In nodule, what you saw in this, uh, there will be some nodules. Now, what will happen because of these nodules? As these nodules increase, the capillaries get compressed, the blood flow will stop to the uh, nephron. So, obviously, the nephron, uh, the tubular, uh, it will start getting atrophied, right? And the interstitial space will start getting fibrosed. So, this kidney, which was nice like this, will become shrunken, small, it will become because of fibrosis, okay? So, all this you will see in diabetes, diabetic nephropathy. Still more is their weight. Just see where we are at this moment. We started off with diabetic nephropathy. We saw the first step only we have seen. Still diabetic glomerular sclerosis in that diffuse nodular two steps only we have finished. Still we have to read about vascular lesions, diabetic pyelonephritis and tubular lesions. Okay. So in this uh, diffuse what you saw, cap, uh, cap, uh, thickening of uh, the glomerular basement membrane. This is very important. Thickening. Thickening. Remember, and uh, capsular drop, very important word. Fibrin cap, very important word. You have to write all this, right? This capsular is nothing but hyaline. So, mesangial matrix will increase. There is proliferation of mesangial cells. Then, we saw nodular glomerular sclerosis. In this, the important words will be nodule only. Nodule only is important word. Now, let us move on to the next point here. That is the vascular lesions, right? Vascular lesions of diabetic nephropathy. In vascular lesions, actually, <clears throat> nothing very different is there, okay? What they have explained, no, same thing. The if This is the glomerulus and this is the efferent arteriole afferent and efferent, afferent and efferent arteriole. Basically, there will be atheroma. There will be hyaline arteriosclerosis, right? Because of which there will be ischemia, renal ischemia. The blood flow is not proper, so tubular atrophy and then fibrosis, interstitial <coughs> fibrosis. Same thing which you have already seen, okay? So, don't worry much about this. So, vascular lesions over. Moving on guys, so diabetic pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis means, nephritis means inflammation of the nephron, itis. So nephron, itis, nephron, inflammation of the nephron. So this can be usually because of bacterial infection. These people are very prone to bacterial infections. So there can be pyelonephritis. So papillary necrosis, necrotizing papillitis is an important complication of diabetes. So it is an important uh, complication of uh, diabetes. Which one? Papillary necrosis. Okay, so this will result in acute pyelonephritis. Chronic pyelonephritis is very common. Moving on, we are looking at tubular lesions now. We have reached the tubules. Now, look, look at the tubular lesions. They are also called as Armani 
Epstein lesions. Armani Epstein lesions means think about the kidney. In the kidney, the tubules. In diabetic nephropathy, these people will have Armani Epstein lesions. That's why they call it as the rich man's disease or something, right? Uh, what and all, they have a lot of sugar. They are uh, having Armani Epstein lesions and all in the nephron. Wow. So, an untreated diabetic who has uh, extremely high blood sugar, what will happen in this guy? The epithelial cells of the proximal convoluted tubules, we are talking about the proximal convoluted tubules, they have glycogen deposits. Okay. Now, these glycogen deposits, they appear as vacuoles. They appear as vacuoles. Glycogen deposits, they appear as vacuoles. Okay. These are called as Armani Epstein lesions. The tubules, <coughs> the tubules return to normal on control. So, the tubules uh, return to normal. So, if you control sugar, then this uh, Epstein, uh, Armani Epstein lesions will go away. So, guys, just try to understand where we are. Uh, if this is the Bowman's capsule and this becomes your proximal convoluted tubule, the proximal convoluted tubule cells, right, they have some glycogen deposits that is called as uh, tubular lesions or Armani Epstein lesions. Once the bl blood sugar this person controls, these uh, uh, deposits also, they go away. Okay. So, let's take a recap of what we have seen in diabetic nephropathy. Diabetic nephropathy is a complication of uh, diabetes, if it is uncontrolled diabetes. So basically here, what we will see, it is a complication of, so it's a complication of diabetes mellitus, which is a metabolic disorder, this hyperglycemia, right, chronic hyperglycemia. So which leads to damage of the glomerulus, right, that's what you have to write here, glomerular damage. Glomerular injury, you can say, or something like that. So, there is going to be protein urea, nephrotic syndrome, renal failure, death. Due to cardiac issues, there will be death. Okay. So, you will see glomerulosclerosis in which you will see diffuse and nodular glomerulosclerosis. So, in diffuse, you will see capsular drop, fibrin cap, thickened glomerular basement membrane. Mesangial matrix will be more. Proliferation of mesangial cells will be there. Then thickening of the arterioles. Then nodular glomerulosclerosis. You will see the nodular hyaline deposit in the mesangial matrix. It is going to be in the lobules. In all, uh, uh, no, in most uh, glomeruli, it will be there, this one. And uh, this is hyaline deposit. This will uh, compress the capillary. And once they compress the capillary, there is going to be ischemia, renal ischemia because of which there will be tubular atrophy, interstitial fibrosis and contracted kidney. Vascular lesions, same thing, atheroma, arteriosclerosis, ischemia, tubular atrophy and interstitial fibrosis. Diabetic pyelonephritis, these people are very prone to infection, so there will be bacterial infections leading to pyelonephritis. There will be papillary necrosis, necrotizing papill papillitis. Armani Epstein lesions you will see in the tubules, the proximal convoluted tubules of these uh, untreated diabetics. So, these are called as Armani Epstein lesions. They will go away if the person controls his sugar. So, that's all. That's all. That's all in diabetic nephropathy. Hope you will write something in the exam and get some marks. Please revise this video before the exam. Bye. Bye.